Hello everyone, I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Eric. And I made Eric watch 1960's The Time Machine. And what did you make me watch, Eric? I made Captain Logan watch Tropic Thunder. Yeah, we both did a movie this time. We don't usually do two movies on the we show. We four but... weeks. Yeah, and Eric just really felt like... Sometimes we, we do shows because we just really feel like sitting down and watching you a movie. You were in a bad mood, and I, and I was in the mood to watch Tropic Thunder, and you said you want to see it. I was like, hey, you want to watch Tropic Thunder? I was not in a bad mood. I was melancholy. I was melancholy. Um, that cheered me up, though. That was, yeah, it was, you that laughed was quite a bit. I did. I really enjoyed it. And, that like, movie. From, from, like, second one. We'll talk about that when we get to it. Uh, you, want, you want to start with Time Machine? Yeah, let's start with Time Machine. So, we did first. Uh, I have uh, had this unfortunate track record of picking movies that I thought were really good that I watched with Eric and decided that I didn't like them even as much as but I used to. You haven't seen in, like, years or, like, a decade or yeah, and so Yeah, but there wasn't as much of an excuse with Source Code. And I'm... It's still almost a decade ago. No, it's not. Is it is it that is it that it's old? Like two thousand nine. Oh, it is pretty old, isn't it? I yeah. Think, I know it doesn't go back quite that. Maybe maybe it is almost that old. I forget now. Anyway, um, right though, it's older than I remembered it. Whatever. Um, so I decided to finally pick a classic that I was pretty darn sure I would not have that with. So I picked uh, the Time Machine from nineteen sixty, which uh, I had not seen until a few years ago. And once I saw it, wondered why it wasn't heralded as a more important, bigger science fiction classic. A lot of reviewers, when it came out back in the 60s, uh, were not in love with it, thought that it was a little bit sluggish, even even at the time, mm. and uh, that it was, um, and, and that it was a little bit, you know, uneven and stuff. And um, having watched it again, I'm not having that experience that I've had with some other things that I've tried to show you, but um, I still don't think it's quite as good as I thought it was. But um, I think it's I think it's a must watch for science fiction fans. Here's the thing about about the issues with the film. Yes, they're almost all in the third act, yeah. and they come from the book. Every adaptation I've ever seen of the Time Machine, I guess except for the Guy Pierce one, tries to come up with an explanation. Yeah, I don't understand how the Neanderthals control technology. Yeah, me neither. And like it's it's really bad here. <laughs> but like I've never seen it done well except for Guy Pierce, who creates like a super Morlock. But the Morlocks. Are like these like ape men, but they had control advanced technology that manipulates the hippie people. Well, they're not hippie people. I kept thinking, I kept reading into it as, as commentary on hippie culture, but that hasn't happened yet when yeah. this movie comes out. It's very interesting. But you can tell we're on the cusp of it. Yeah, we're almost there. Yeah. Something's in the air. Um, no, it's very good, um, except for the unnecessary framing device. Uh, yeah, that's irritating because we 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 start we start ahead and then we jump back for no good reason. And, uh, and it feels like one of those cheats that I'm always complaining about in comics, where it's like, we're afraid it's not going to look exciting enough because we got to explain the science of time. So he has to come up with his shirt ripped and, and like, and as I, like I came from the future. And, and as I suspected, all that happens in about the last, like, five minutes he's in the future. Like, he goes on this grand adventure and nothing happens to him until, like, like moments before is when his shirt rips and he gets soot on his face. And I was like, ah, oh, that's all that always, that's how, that's, how, that's, all, that's how that always goes. You, you'd have to tell a completely different story. But I feel like that kind of framing device especially doesn't work because he's we jump from the same location to the same location. Mm -hmm. uh, it feels really funny. It's like we've just met these people and now we got to go back in time and meet them again in mm -hmm. the same place. Mm -hmm. If if that movie opened and and it, and the other thing is your framing device like that can't be too long. I can't think that like like I'm getting in that. This is the thing I. I really hate about this this device, and I know I complain about this a lot, but I've never come up with a perfect articulation for it, so I'm still trying to figure out how to really explain why I don't like it. Um, I don't mind it as much when it's like, dare I say, the movie version of Daredevil, where we open with him on a tower bleeding, and he drops, and then we jump backwards. It's like a, 30 seconds to a minute at best. Um, it's a lot better when it's... We're establishing the, like tone and the excitement of what the piece is going to be like, but we're not getting you invested in a in a in 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 a in a story in a character yet where like you think you're on your way and then we got to start over. Mm -hmm. That's what drives me crazy with that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And this isn't as bad as other things, but it takes too long. Yeah. If this opened with he just runs in his shirts ripped and then we jump back, that's fine. Or that's more fine. Well, and the opening's so long as it is, that yep. adding that at the beginning makes it take even longer, because you meet all these characters, he comes in, and they're like, we were supposed to meet him here at this at this time, and he comes back, and then he... And, and then, like, we flash back. He, and it's also ridiculous with the framing device itself, he goes, because I kept thinking of him telling the story, 
And so he's telling the story to these, to these men that were here a week ago, and he goes, do you remember a week ago when you all gathered here, and then you said this, and then you said this, and then I said this, and I'm like, they don't care. Like, it doesn't even make sense. Yeah. You're, this is just for us. Um, but, but beyond that, um, it's very good. There's, there's some things that I don't know if they're supposed to be jokes. The big one is, he's, he's, so there's, there's, this, there's this window that has like a, like a mannequin with a dress on it. This is one of my favorite things in it. And he goes ahead one year, and like, it's just a different dress. He's like, is that supposed to be a dress? Like he's, he hasn't gone forward in time like at all, and he's like reacting like, oh my god, like what, what is happening? Um, he also gets information he doesn't have with the, with the war. He, he shouldn't know that there's, yeah. that there's been two wars. and that. Yeah. All that's kind of weird. Um, we also play fast and loose with casting the same actor. Sometimes we cast the same actor for like their descendants and sometimes they don't. Yeah, um, that's true. But um, it, 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 it's, a, it's a gorgeous film. Um, yeah, production values are really good. I, in a time when we're going back and forth between black and white and color, like it makes sense that it's his color. Yeah. Um, it's it, it it and he and he's really engaging. Like he's a he's a real strong leading yeah, he, man. I think he carries it really well. Um, I don't know if this makes any sense. You buy that he's a scientist and that he built it. I buy that he's uh, very specifically like that like turn of the century scientist, like like the Doc Savage type, where he's both like a muscular like he's like, an adventurer. He's an adventurer and a, and a man of science. I and I buy that completely. Um, he he's he's because like oftentimes when we do that. They either seem a little too long headed where you're like, so you're, you're like you're not really like you. We casted you because because you have muscles, but you're not really you're re you're reading cue cards, or it goes the other way where like it's like okay, wait, well, you worked out a little bit, but like I don't believe that you could like he feels like he could do both, and it makes sense when you when you get to the end and you have the whole adventure. Um, he is H. G. Wells. Yeah. Okay. And I, and I and I don't know if this is the first thing that does that. Well, we I, do I, that a lot. I assume it is. After this, we do it all the time, but. But more often, we'll make it the author also building a time machine. I want to know why H.G. Wells never becomes invisible. Why do we I never do that? H.G. Wells always builds a time machine. Can I tell you why? Can I tell you why? Sure. I mostly said that as a joke. Um, because I, I'm also not sure if, we, if, we did H, if we've ever done H.G. Wells in, in, War, in War the Worlds. But I, Not that I'm aware of. I believe he the always time, builds machine, a time machine. I believe at, uh, with the... Time after time does it. Lois and Clark does it. I, I believe it's it's both Time Machine and uh, I know I know I know it's in War of the Worlds, but I'm not Red Time Machine. But I assume that the narrator doesn't have a name. He's just a narrator. That's true. In which Invisible Man does not have, and neither does. Uh, nope, that's not him. Never mind. Uh, yeah, Invisible Man doesn't have that. Uh, Invisible Man has has a has a yes. Uh, uh, it's Griffin. Like he has he has, he has there's a there's a antagonist. I'm impressed. Do you remember that? I I did not remember. Uh, Universal that. Monsters. Oh okay okay. okay. Um, but uh, but 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 yeah so. Uh, like, I think that's why we do it, but it's interesting we've never done it with War of the Worlds, because that narrator is also nameless. Unless we have it, I just don't know it, but I don't think that's... We haven't done a major thing. Yeah. I, well, okay. So I've seen the original War of the Worlds in black and white, and I've seen the Tom Cruise one. Neither of those no, are... they did not. Or H.G. Right. Wells. Um, but so, uh, yeah, no, it, 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 it's very good. Everyone should see it. It's, uh, most of its problems are not exactly its own. Um, I, I, like almost everything I think I take issue with comes from the book. That's not their fault. And overall, it's it's a pretty smart movie. Um, it never needed to be remade. And it's, and it's wonderfully thoughtful. No, it didn't. Now, now the the reason to remake it, and I love the first act of the two thousand two movie, and then everything after that it falls apart. But um, I haven't seen it in a long time. But I remember being the first two. Like it's it's just once he gets to the Morlocks. Everything up to that I remember liking. But yeah. It's difficult. To I haven't seen it in theaters. It's difficult to make that third act engaging. Yeah. And the idea of it is more interesting than seeing it. That, like, we we destroy ourselves, and if you go far enough into the future, you basically look like you're in caveman times. Mm -hmm. Like, that's... But there are, like, you know, re remnants of the progress, and it's not The book up. scene is great. Yeah. I... That really got me. When he goes... When, when he's like, do you have books? And they go to the library, and then he touches the books and they just all crumble that really got me yeah i because i didn't see that coming uh but like it's it's really thoughtful about its handling of the human condition and it's um and it is an optimistic film but it's also 
Uh, and I guess the book is this way too, but it's, it's, it's an optimistic thing, but it's also something of a cautionary thing. It's about, you know, the, the, the obviously the, the, the two sides of humanity. And so like, uh, you know, we can do great things with technology, but we can also do yeah, obviously really horrible things with technology. And, um, he believes that technology will save us and he sees how that's not true. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, by the end, he has completely changed what he wants. Mm hmm um, but also because it's, because, like, the time machine is, like, the, the, the foundation of that, of, of, like, all time travel stories, you don't need to make this again, because all you're ever gonna do is keep making this story, and, and people, and, 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 and people are gonna be like, well, it's, yeah, okay, so he travels in time. Yeah, the reason that it's maybe worth modernizing, although it's hard to say what you can is that we know what future history about. is? Yes. And uh, that's what was interesting about doing it from the book to this, is that World you know what history is like up until 1960, mm. and you get, to see, you get to see that play out, and uh, it, it has... We know more about what the rest of the 20th century is going to look like, and so you can see progress or the lack thereof you can in see the culture. The war and you can see well I guess you wouldn't be British because I don't think the British have much And again with that right. mannequin we, we make we make a big deal out of uh you know differences in, in fashion as as time goes on. The most goes durable on, mannequin. Start, as as time goes on we start taking more clothes off. And, yeah. Um and, and like you, there there's more to say when we have more history. Mm-hmm. Um, also, this movie is like... You, really, could make, you could make the argument, if you could make a good one, that we should remake this movie every 50 years. Uh, yeah. You know? That's fair. Um, the, uh, uh, this movie's clearly very, very influential. We were talking about that while we were watching. I was like, oh, is, is, is this borrowing from this? Or oh, I think this is borrowing from this. The big one, I want, I want to make you watch this, but I want to waste a made, made you watching this. Uh, <laughs> but it's just coming up. You should watch Peter Cottontail. Because it's borrowing so much imagery from this movie. It's so weird. Okay. Uh, it's a time travel movie. Weird. Yeah, uh, and, I, and I never knew that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Uh, but yeah, so I, 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 will, I will go with feeling it. Well, and you haven't seen a ton of TOS, but God, there's a lot of TOS in this. I six, felt six, that when we got years. to the Warlocks. Yeah. And the girl feels like she's right out of a TOS episode. Yeah, I can see that. Well, one of Kirk's ladies. Or Spock's. I know Spock's really had ladies. Oh, yeah, sure. She seems more like a more like a girl that would fall in love with Spock, honestly. But, yeah. Anyway, um, okay, so you made me watch a totally different kind of movie. Yes, a movie called Tropic Thunder. Uh, which I never bothered with, because um, I just assumed that it was the, the kind of raunchy comedy that's not for me. And that's true, but I enjoyed it. It's really fun. It's got a lot of actors you like. Yes. And I think it's smarter and cleverer than you would think it would be. Yeah, and all the satire about uh, the the film industry and, you know, dumbing down the culture and... Uh, and actors being, like, really insecure and... Yeah, and, 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 and how cutthroat the business is. Um, all of that was kind of made fresh again. Like, we, we have a lot of movies that satirize that or have social commentary about it. Um, it was fun to see that kind of thing as smart as it was in a really goofy uh, uh, absurd comedy mm, it f I, I've always thought where it feels like it does, it's not pulling punches like I feel like most of the time when we see it it's a little wired down like this is just like yeah actors actors are messed up because it and is Hollywood's part of up. the Hollywood machine and this isn't afraid of any of that mm -hmm. no yeah it, it feels kind of warts and all like it, it, it's yeah, a it feels comedy like it's and, exposing everything yeah yeah um and like it's the kind of thing that gets away with that because something else is at the is at the fore. So either um, so so sometimes sometimes with things like that, it's comedy. Sometimes it's um, you know putting something like an alien science fiction setting. You know mm. whatever it is. But like yeah, it, I think it gets away with some of the things it's saying because and gets away with some of the uh, admittedly like controversial stuff because mm -hmm. it's such a like out there goofy comedy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it gets away with a lot that you wouldn't get away with necessarily in a drama. Which comedy always has. I do think that even in a comedy, there's stuff this movie does that you could not get away with now. No, absolutely. Um, and and there, was, there was a big controversy even when it came out about about the one scene. Um, but, uh... I was, I was gonna say something about something. And, um, obvious, and obviously Downey's performance. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, know, I mean, I'm sure that was insanely controversial. 
Yeah. He's, he's, a, yeah, they, they, they got heat for it. And he's like, no, I'm just playing, I'm playing a guy that's like, take, I'm playing an actor who takes things too far. Like, that's, that's the point of it. Yeah. Um, but not as bad as I think it would, would, would be now if he did it. Um, like, there yeah. was some kind, it felt like the right amount of controversy when it came out. Um, you have, you have a lot of, like, boycotting and people in the streets. And I thought about this after we watched this. I feel like this movie in particular, but also a couple other movies like this, is kind of why I felt like the first Deadpool was so soft. Interesting. Was okay. like, I'd seen things like this, and I was like, yeah, you, you're not, you're barely rated R. This is an R-rated movie. Deadpool's like PG-17. And, <laughs> and this isn't afraid of, of, of anything. No. No. You know, it, it takes massive risks. And, and it's, I, not, it's not sensitive. I, th I think it, he gets great performances out of everyone. Like, uh, uh, CJ and I were talking at work about, like, like who's the weak link? He's like, Ben Stiller's the weak link in that. I'm like, he's great in that. I, like, think, he's, I think he's excellent. I don't think anybody's really the weak link. Maybe the rapper guy who I've never seen anything else ever. No, I think he's fine, too. No, he's good, but, like, if I had to pick one, I'd guess him. Because he's almost only there to react to Robert Downey Jr. hard for me to say that. Yeah, but his reactions are priceless. Yeah. And he's essential. Yeah. You have to have him. Yes. He it's really to important to have uh, the black guy who's commenting on the thing that... Robert, uh, Robert Downey Jr. is doing, and he's but he's really funny. Mm -hmm. No, I, it, I, I, I think, I think, I think it's a really good script. Um, especially that bit when Robert Downey is like, "What do you mean, you people?" And he's trying to say, "What do you mean, you people?" That's hilarious. Which is the first time that that happens because you're like, "I was waiting for that. I was gonna be angry if, uh, if I was if, set if my watch never... by." I was like, "When is this guy gonna complain about this?" I, I think my favorite of all of that is is when Robert Downey Jr. hugs him. And starts saying like what sounds nice, and then he's like, "This is the theme song for the Jeffers." The Jeffers. He's like, "Just because the theme song of the Jeffers doesn't make it not true." That may not true. Yeah, that's great. Um, it took me too long to realize that uh, the Hollywood head honcho guy was Tom Cruise. It took me a good two minutes to realize that's who that was. And would you have even really noticed it then if I if I wasn't like, did you know who that is? I would have eventually figured it out because yeah. of certain facial twitches and th uh, twitches and things. A lot of people did not know. I had to get him off the TV. I had to get inside the room. Well, well, I got it on the TV, but if you hadn't said anything, it might not. I might not have gotten it until we got him in, in his room. office. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like dancing to rap songs and stuff. Oh, uh, he's great. Which uh, went on too long, but yeah. That was not as, I don't think that was as funny as they thought it was, but... Oh, I think it's pretty funny. I don't need it necessarily, I guess, as long as they do it in the credits, but that first scene, I, I, I like. Um, sure. Because it, it's just, it, 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 it's all, I think it's because it's all built around that, that, that jet joke where he's like, he's like, you want me to sell my friend, my friend up the river for a G8 airplane. That, yeah. Um, I love Jack Black. He was fine in this. Oh, I think he's great. But really? I was not super impressed. Um, but I think some, some of it's maybe just what they gave him to do. I don't know. Um, he's got so much energy. He has, and he has one of my favorite true. lines in the movie when he when he puts the heroin in those guys' faces and he's like, it's a quick move fast. They're going to be up in 16 hours. Um, I think that's yeah, really funny. Yeah, no, that's really funny. Um, no, what I like about it is that he's not exactly playing himself, but... That's true. I like how insecure he is. I like that he's the guy who does the gross-out comedies, and he hates that that's all anyone likes him for. Yeah. Um, like, I like that he's the 40s no, guy, right. and he's does. like, people only laugh at me because I fall. That actually does resonate. That's true. Um, and I'm sure lots of comedic actors have that. Um, like, that felt, that felt... They all have a thing like that. Um, they're all a archetype. Um, they're not, like, one actor. Uh, the kid that's running the tribe, they're not in Vietnam, they're like right outside of Vietnam. Mm. The kid that runs that tribe is awesome. Yeah, yeah. He's surprisingly great. I wish he was in more things. I feel like I saw him in one other thing, but I'm not even sure what it is. But yeah. yeah. He's hilarious, and that seems like the hardest thing to cast. Yeah. Yeah, because like, he has to be scary. You hinge your whole movie on that. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's, I mean, it's risky casting a, a, a kid with a lot of lines anyway, but I mean, like that, specifically that, like he's got to run this this uh you know this this group this tribe and he's got to be evil and but funny yep yep he's 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 he's, he's great um yeah I'll flip feeling it it it's uh yeah it's not my thing but it was worth watching and I might go back to it at some point honestly you said Sarah wants to watch it I, which I'm surprised by and I don't know if she'll like it does not seem like a thing she'll like yeah. It doesn't seem to me either, but I wouldn't think she would like Deadpool either, so I don't know. Yeah, I still don't get that, but like, maybe there's just enough to latch onto that she'll think is funny. Um, 
the fig tree was great. Yeah, it's worth watching just for those. They're they're all really funny. And I found myself going like, oh, I wish the whole movie was just this. And then the, I want the I want the torture okay. movies. Um, that those are my favorites. I know you really like Satan's Alley, with uh with uh. Cause it's so weird with uh, with, uh cause 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 it's it's Tom McGuire it's it's like Nickel it's, it's like MTV's best kiss winner. <laughs> Tom yeah, McGuire. that's one of the that's one of the best things about the movie is the fake stuff mixed with the real stuff where mm. it feels authentic, but it's it's got to be out there because it is it is to a degree like a parody film and so it. it it's it's gotta it's gotta feel like it's in a heightened universe. So you need some fake stuff, but I don't think it works if everything's fake. Mm. I think they have to. Re there's gotta be pop culture references. There's gotta be mentions of, of, of real people. You know what? You know what is referenced? I don't know if it's still a thing. It's when he talks about um, you could be on the the Kids Choice Awards. They'll slime you and everything. You have that potential. Do we still do the Kids' Choice Awards? Is if we do, I don't thing? think it's popular enough that people would necessarily get that. Yeah, but, but that cracked me yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Really I see funny. that potential in you. They'll slime you the whole thing. Um, the, the thing that made me squirm was when uh, the guy explodes and then he picks up the head. Yeah, and, and, they, and I told you there's one scene you might have to turn your head And from. I did, I watched it, but I was like, oh my god. And, and, uh, and he thinks it's a fake head. Yeah, and he starts like talking with it and yeah. stuff, and it's great. And he's like, ah. "Oh, don't do that! It's gross." It's just thinking about that, I can't even deal with it. I knew you were gonna do that. Oh, that was the thing. Anyway, um, yeah. What else should we mention about that movie? Um, do you want to talk about Nick Nolte, who's in this movie? It's amazing. He's, awesome. he's he's so good. You grew hands. That's the best line. Oh, <laughs> you grew hands. Um, and this is also the movie that made me like Danny McBride. Up until this point, I was like, he just plays a jerk at everything. He's the he's the explosives guy. Um, he's really funny. He's re this is the movie where I was like, he doesn't have a whole lot of screen time. He's really funny. Oh, I see what you're doing, and now I really like Damon Bright. He also uh, that guy co-wrote the new Halloween movie. Interesting. Yeah, and and, and, and he's an alien covenant. He's the I think he's the pilot alien covenant. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, cool. I like Damon Bright a lot, but I didn't. But this is the movie that makes me. Like Dan McBride, he's not on the cover anymore. Well, the only way I would have ever watched that is if you did it as a as a yeah. younger watch. So I'm glad you finally did that because the thing I always felt like I needed to see because everybody always said that it was like Robert Downey's you know best performance. It is an amazing one-two punch of Iron Man and this in the same year. That's crazy. Uh, I remember I, I was listening to Smodcast back in the day where they're like, and it kind of hurts my feelings that he's not making comedies. Yeah, that he's he's been doing Iron Man for ten years. Well, he, he did do date, and that's really hard for me to watch. I've heard of that. Uh, it's basically a remake of Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Um, is it bad? So I don't like Zach Galifianakis for the most part. Okay. But it's one of those things where like the comedy comes from he's stuck with this guy that's the most annoying person on the planet and like gross and like he's stuck on this road trip with him. And then at the end he feels bad for him and I just can't go to that place. Like I can't go to the emotional arc that that movie takes me because I would have murdered Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> I couldn't do it. <laughs> Oh, okay. That's, yeah, that's fair. So you might like it more than me, but I, I, I had a real hard time. I'm gonna try. I want to watch anything Downey's done in ten years that's not Iron Man, like because I yep. just didn't even know it's made uh, out of the the judge or the jury or something like that. I remember that coming out. I never watched. I that. bet it's called the Executioner. I, I, I bet that's what it's called. <laughs> I think it's called the Judge. Well, anyway, when did we get water bottles this big? Did you buy this? I did. Okay, I bought it because I was late for the omnibus, so I wouldn't have to keep filling up water bottles. I just got a big water bottle. Um, that's that's smart, but like I kept I kept thinking it was a perspective issue. Wow. where you had it over there. I was like, there's no way it's that big. And then you had, I was like, let me see that for a second. Did my wife go to the store and buy these giant water wow. bottles? Well, it is made in Texas, so, <laughs> and everything, you know, of course, is made know. in Texas. What are my thanks as always for watching? We sure appreciate it. There are the couple of movies that we made each other watch. I have no idea what I'm doing next time. Maybe we should finally do the TV Made Me Watch, because I really okay. want to do that. Because okay. um, I have a specific thing I want to show you. Yeah, yeah, you've said that for a while. Do you have a specific thing? Do you have a thing that immediately comes to mind where you're like, I would That's do like that a pilot? TV thing? Yeah. I'm going to do... We should do either pilots or like pilot and second episode. Okay. I can try and think of something. Okay. Because I want to do that as like a, as, as like a duo thing. Okay. But if you don't have a great one, I won't do it. I'll pick I'll pick a movie. We'll do it. I'll, 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 I'll figure something out. Sweet. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm excited about that. Cool. And I mean, you do, you do cartoons. You can do whatever you want to do. Yeah. 
Um, but anyway, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. And we're going to move on with the Omnibus to uh, License to Review. And Eric is going to serenade me with a review of Your Eyes Only, which I did for not your watch. Eyes for Your Eyes I'm sorry, goodness. Which I, I, I knew that, too. Which I have not watched before, but Eric's going to talk about for us. So, anyway, um, thanks so much for watching this video. We sure appreciate it. And we will see you again next time. I am Captain Logan. And I'm Eric. Later, folks.